Sometimes those guys will like run at you with a knife. And then they'll like run through you. Other times you're like, oh, it's just one of the neighbors. And then they'll stab you to death. You just don't know. That's the thing. Oh, no. <laughs> you have to be f***ing kidding me. up guys commander keen back with another youtube video i know it's been a little while but i've had a lot of stuff on the go lately i've branched off into a couple different games and had a couple different side projects on the go but we're back today i'm here to show off a new little project that i've had going on with some fallout 4 over the last little, little while what my goal was was to create a really as 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 true to form as we could get somewhat realistic but very immersive Fallout 4 survival horror experience. So I've developed a mod set that I think you'll really enjoy. Um, if you like any of this content that you're seeing, be sure to like, follow, subscribe, all those fancy social media buzzwords. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Since I'm primarily a Borderlands 3 player, I had a really tough time trying to figure out how to get everything going at first. Uh, as someone who doesn't play any kind of really modded games at all, I found the learning curve um, to be a little bit steep at first with modding this game until I discovered the Vortex mod uh, loader shown here on the screen. This tool makes it so easy for someone like me who has no idea what they're doing to come in and just load up all the mods, troubleshoot anything, check compatibility, reorder things effortlessly, and just to go from start to finish, um, it just makes it so easy, even for someone like me who has literally no experience modding whatsoever. I'm not going to go through my mod list one by one and show everything and explain it, uh, because honestly we'd be here for hours. It's an expansive mod list, even an edited down video would probably be a half an hour to an hour long, and I just... I don't want to do that. That's that's way too long. So what I'll do is I will copy and paste the mod list down in the description below. Alternatively, you could also pop over to my Discord, and I will also make sure the link down there is available. Uh, that's where I'll be posting any updates, any Q and A's, any sort of discussion whatsoever relating to this Fallout 4 survival horror project. Now, although I don't plan on going every, over every single mod to talk about each one in depth and show off exactly what it does to the game, I do think it's important to recognize a few of the mods that really help make this play through what it is. And the very first one that I think we need to talk about is the Grim ENB uh, by Lou. This is actually a full overhaul for Fallout 4. I've played this in its entirety before. Uh, on stream and we had an absolute blast going through it all um, it is absolutely fantastic the amount of changes it makes to the game cannot be understated it really is the key i believe to giving this new playthrough of the game its overall theme environment uh, the new sounds absolutely everything this was my number one pick to get this horror playthrough kicked off. Now the second mod that I think that requires mentioning that really makes this gameplay play through what it is, is Follow 2287 Gas Mask of the Wasteland. This is what gives our screen that slightly distorted overlay, allows rain and mist to collect on the lens that we have to wipe off, blood spatter from enemies that we melee kill, the broken glass effect, the echoey, creepy, heavy breathing noise that we get while we're running or doing anything where we're using up our stamina. Everything about this mod just really adds to the immersiveness. Immer is, is immersiveness a word? I don't know, it is now. The immersiveness, immersivity of this playthrough. Uh, it really makes you feel like you are there you are trapped in this horrible environment and the loudest sound in the world is your own breath and your own heartbeat. This is another one of the mods that changes the game. 
The third and final most important one that I recommend is an absolute must-have, mandatory one for your load list if you're going to replicate something like this, is Zombie Walkers. This is going to turn all the ghouls in the game into zombies and allow you to set any kind of spawn rules to change other NPCs into zombies, the behavior of the zombies, spawn rates, spawn locations, uh, infection settings including how often or if at all you want your 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 character to get infected if you get touched by a zombie or attacked by a zombie there's just so much to this mod uh, I can't recommend it enough it really helps make this feel like a true survival horror game especially when combined with the gas mask mod that can be damaged or broken if you get meleeed by a zombie causing irreparable horrible effects that you will struggle immediately to cure or you will just die uh, as well as the fog from the grim enb uh, sometimes you'll get within inches of these guys before you even know that they're there um, and if you have a whole bunch of them spawn around you as you can see in some of these screenshots you can set a ton of a ton of them to spawn in one place. Um, it, it truly makes for uh, a scary interaction. What we have now is a look at the environmental impacts that these mods have on us just walking around Sanctuary. As you can see all the other NPCs are also wearing gas masks as per the 2077 gas mask mod. Uh, there's a dense fog in the sky and all around us thanks to Grim. There's our companion that comes along with the Grim mod. Everything is really dark, dreary, difficult to see. Um, I think it leaves a lot up to your imagination as to what's around the next corner. You can see in the bottom left we have a bit of damage to our gas mask. Uh, this would have been due to receiving weapon damage from other NPCs like raiders or potentially getting meleeed by a zombie. The other thing you'll notice right away is a complete lack of heads up display. No idea what your health is, your ammo count, what direction you're going in. None of the extra little tidbits of information that follow gives you during a regular gameplay is available from this main gameplay screen. I wanted something that took away all of the help that the, you received from the game and anything that might have tipped you off obviously outside of the obvious that you're playing a video game I wanted you the player to feel as in the moment and in the game as possible so getting rid of letters on screens or maps or ammo counts or anything like that that you wouldn't have normally lets you focus on the environment around you what could spring up from the grass, what could be around the next corner, uh, any risks that are in front of you, behind you, around you, underneath or above you. I didn't want any distractions from that so I took the entire heads up display away. Now that Grimm is taking care of the music and the fog and kind of some of the tones and color palettes in the game, I wanted to look after the rest of the environment, more specifically the foliage, uh, the grass, the trees, the bushes, uh, its density, its color, uh, how vivid or muted it was, how tall the trees were, how thick the leaves were. Absolutely every part of this is crafted to make you feel like the trees are looming over you, the grasses surround you, you're pushing through areas where you can't see more than 10 feet in front of you. I wanted the treetops to absolutely tower over you, block off every bit of light humanly possible. Uh, I really wanted you to feel like you were alone. Uh, alone in the woods, alone uh, even on a, a grassy plain, um, but I wanted your vision obscured, I wanted you to wonder what was coming next and to not know until it was too late. Since a lot of Fallout 4's gameplay takes place in urban areas, in the inner city Boston and surrounding areas, I wanted to make sure that the areas inside the city also felt just as terrifying, just as dreary, uh, just as closed in and hopeless. So there's a couple texture packs that go into just sprucing up some of the urban areas a little more. Nothing major and crazy, uh, but just to add a little bit more of a creepy ambiance that really plays nicely with the rest of the mods in play uh, that makes the nights darker, lighting effects uh, not quite uh, as effective to help you see 
just leaving a lot more to your imagination and leaving you uh, quite literally and figuratively uh, in the dark while you play. Now we can't mention being in the dark without getting into some nighttime gameplay with this mod set on. Nights are truly dark. Uh, I mean pitch black. Uh, unless it's foggy out and there's a little bit of an environmental light source coming from somewhere, you're not going to see anything without uh, a light on either your Pip-Boy or your gun. Now in this instance I do use the uh, I believe it's the Tactical Flashlights uh, mod pack to help out with this. Uh, your Pip-Boy light will also work, uh, but I really enjoy the effect of the look of the Tactical Light uh, and how it can impact your gameplay by giving you kind of a focused beam to really zoom in on a single area, but only be able to see that certain area. As you can see by the, edge of the edges of our screen, Everything else is basically pitch black. Um, nighttime is truly the most terrifying time uh, to play this game as you really have next to no visibility and the idea that something could be in the shadows is more of a danger than ever before. The last part of this mod set that makes for a truly immersive gameplay in my opinion is some addition of weapon mods and replacers. I don't want pipe pistols, uh, I want MP5s and AK-47s and something a little more uh, true to real life, um, not so much the fantasy fiction weaponry that you find in the Fallout universe. I wanted that replaced with actual real world weapons uh, in the gameplay footage you're watching right now. I'm running a suppressed modified version of the Sig Sauer uh, MPX 9mm. Uh, in my opinion, it just adds another degree of realism and legitimacy to the game that makes it feel a lot more immersive to me. Now that we're through with all the boring stuff, uh, I want you guys to take a look at a couple clips that I recorded uh, that really highlight the full effect of these mods and what you guys can expect from your gameplay if you decide to set it up the same way. Enjoy!
All right, now that you've seen some gameplay footage kind of showing off a little bit of what the mod can do, I think we're going to wrap this up. Uh, I really can't express enough, guys, uh, how intensive this mod set is and how much of the game it really does replace and how much it enhances. This video truly only scratched the surface of everything that it does, but I, I just didn't want this video to be too long. My recommendation, if you want to see more of this, is to come and check me out on Twitch Monday and Wednesday evenings, uh, Mountain Time, usually around 5.30 to 9 or so. Uh, we'll be streaming this over the next little bit. Uh, come and check it out if you really want to see what this mod is actually capable of, or sorry, what this mod set is capable of. Um, again, you can check it out on the Discord. Keep an eye out for more YouTube videos. Uh, I'm having a ton of fun with this with my community, so I think it's something we'll get, we're going to be doing for a little while here. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you liked any of this and want to see more, be sure to like, follow, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, and have a good one, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.